Where are we going to get the comps? Well, from a realtor. The MLS is a great resource. Of course, you got to have access to a realtor or to the MLS. Is it possible to have access to the MLS without being a realtor? Are you supposed to? Not really. There are some exceptions. <clears throat> How many of you do have access to the MLS and are not licensed real estate agents? And I mean the real deal. Not some internet, web-based, doohickey thingamajigger that isn't the MLS. I mean the real deal. How many of you have access to it and are not realtors? Okay, raise your hands up high. Raise them up real high so the folks can look around and see you. Guest site. Well, that's kind of neat. Uh, so, Verna Jean, how do you have access? She has a friend that's a realtor. Who else? There was another couple of hands. How do you have access? Realtor. Friends? How do you have access? Uh, our realtor has me as her assistant. Aha! <laughs> our realtor has me as an assistant. Ooh, that's pretty smart. You beat me to the punch. I was going to suggest that. Uh, you know, you're. In, in, any realtor could make you an assistant, and in most MLS or most boards of realtor, uh, boards of realtors, they can get you access as their assistant to the MLS without you having to have a license. <clears throat> How do you have access? No, that's not that. Yeah, you, you, you're sort of scraping, but that's not the MLS. <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. Who else? Who has access? How do you? Oh, you're you're an appraiser, and appraisers have access, don't you? And you, do you still use DataQuick? Land Vision, okay. So they have a couple of systems that they use, one of which is the MLS. Who else? What, how else did you guys, how did you have access? Uh, a partner. A partner? A team member. Perfect. Asked for it? The REO listing agent or the broker, okay. Did you raise your hand? No? <laughs> Who else? How do you have access? In-law. Perfect. How do you have assistant? Assistant. All right. So, how many of you are married to a realtor? Anybody married to a realtor? Nobody. What's so hard about that? Marry a realtor. <laughs> I guess it's harder than I think. Nobody in the room is married to a realtor. <laughs> Apparently, I'm having a pipe dream. Your title companies can give you property profiles. Hey, you California folks, you remember how they all of a sudden couldn't? And now they can again? That's ridiculous. Title company offer you a property profile. They'll talk to you about, they'll, they'll get you comps, but they'll also get you tax roll data. Square footage, tax value, date of last transfer, amount, seller, buyer, current owner's name, bedrooms, bathrooms, all that stuff. That's very useful stuff. And in most cases, your title company won't even charge you for it. If they want to charge you, well, then use a realtor and close a few deals with the title company. Now they won't want to charge you because you're a regular customer. You going to tell me how you have access? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Ah, friend of yours gave you a login password to the title company information. Pull comps and tax roll data. So, you know, a, a lot of uh, title companies have access and they'll, they'll set up an account for you because you're a client. Good. Online free websites like uh, Zillow. Uh, and there's a huge list at CameronDirect.com on the tools page. And then you go to uh, source, uh, sources of comps and there's a massive list there. On that list, Redfin is about to go if it isn't already on there. Uh, Zillow, you know... <laughs> Uh, Zillow's a little, uh, I'll tell you, Zillow, those guys have a, re there's some sharp marketing minds in that organization. They got that name out, everybody talks about it, but I don't know, uh, you know, it's, it, it's a little different everywhere in terms of what it, what it reports. In my market, Zillow tells you, they, well, in most markets, you can get what they call a Zestimate, which is kind of a slick way of providing you with information that I think is a little, Zoptimistic. <laughs> uh, in my market, the, the, we can't get his estimate because there's not enough data or whatever. Uh, and what it tells you is the tax assessed value. Is tax assessed value, a, I mean, can you look at tax assessed value and determine fair market or after repair value? 
A lot, some people say yes. They say, well, in my market, tax assessed value is 80% of fair market value, and so all I have to do is gross it up. You divide tax assessed value by 0.8, and you get fair market value. And I say to that, okay, fair enough, but when was it assessed last? And how accurately? Where I live, the tax assessor, in addition to public enemy number one, <laughs> is extremely inaccurate. Which is why when the grievance period comes up, they get really busy. And I'm there every year. <clears throat> now, I do use tax assessed value as a barometer, though. So if the asking price is significantly less than tax assessed value, I can say, ooh, that one's worth some investigating. Uh, so it, it can be a, a reasonable bar barometer. I, I'm really reluctant to trust anyone whose name starts with that. <laughs> Do you need your glasses for that? <laughs> <laughs> um, subscription services. I'm a Cytex user. Some of you know that. Um, there's, a, you know, there's a few of these out here. RealQuest and Cytex are the two biggies. Um, it costs about $75 a month for a package that suits my needs. If you need more searches, you may pay a little more. Uh, the Cytex model I happen to like because it's, um, it's, a, it's sort of like a cell phone plan where you, there's no roaming charges. You get a finite number of minutes, but you, if, if I'm in California, it doesn't cost me any more than if I'm in Alabama or New York. Uh, so I get the whole country. I can search anywhere in the country uh, a finite number of times for a flat fee per month. The RealQuest model, last I looked at it, was a little different in that you, got unlimited, you get unlimited use within this county. If you want another county, no problem. Add another county. It costs you more. You get unlimited use in that county now, too. But if you live here and you want to look at stuff there, it gets, it gets a little expensive. Some of you guys live in what we refer to as non-disclosure states. Uh, Indiana is one, Texas is one, uh, there are a couple others, where you are not able to go and access recent sales information in your market anywhere other than through a realtor. So if that's the case, then you go to the top of the list to get your comps. And if you don't know a realtor, this is a brilliant way to get to know one. And I think if you live in a disclosure state, it would be extraordinarily unre unreasonable for a realtor to tell you, I really don't have the time or need to pull comps for you when that agent or other agents are the only way you can get it. Um, to be honest, if you live in a non-disclosure state, in a way, you're better off. And I'll tell you why. Because you have to go to realtors to get your MLS comps, and you're delegating it. With RealQuest and SiteX, you do it yourself. Now, the, the nice thing about that, I will say, is that you can do it at 3 in the morning. Uh, but I like the idea of delegating, and I like the idea of you guys delegating it, because now not only you're not, are you not doing the work, but you've got another set of eyes. And perhaps a more, um, uh, you know, maybe those eyes are a little more proficient, if you will, with what's going on in your marketplace right now. I'll tell you, no matter where I pull my comps from, when I'm looking at, you know, when I want to determine the after repair value on a house, I always make a quick call to a realtor just to verify. Always. And it's either John or Linda, usually. I have others that I work with, but John and Linda, I've got this thing, you know, um, going where I, I, you know, we help each other out. They're the ones I told you where I sent them the, the leads I couldn't work with, and they sent me the BPO leads. Um, so I call, and I'll say, hey, John or Linda, hey, hey, listen, uh, talk to me about a house over on such and such street over in the town of, uh, you know, Savona or Bath or Hammondsport or whatever. And, you know, I pulled some comps, and it looks to me like it's worth about 90 or whatever, 150,000. What do you think? And then they'll say, well, you know, there was one that just sold over here uh, recently, and, uh, you know, it depends on the condition. Uh, tell me about that. Uh, what, and, you know, and, and that conversation is really valuable and so much state you have to have that conversation if you don't you might not and I think it's it's worth having Another thing and move on when you are looking at the MLS 
for your comps or your agent is looking at the MLS for your comps, there's at least a decent chance, if not an excellent chance, that FISBO sales are not part of what you're seeing. Uh, because they didn't go through the MLS. There was no listing, there was no listing agent, there was no uh, entry into the MLS. It was sold from a private seller to a buyer without any involvement from a realtor. So there's a chance that those sales are not in your MLS. Uh, you know, very few of us live in non-disclosure states. That information can come from the tax assessor. Now, the tax assessor, we're, you know, we joked about, they do track sales. And the sales information is rarely inaccurate. Assessments, you know, that's another story. So the tax assessor will have all the sales that went through the MLS or were sold FISBO. So basically everything here, title company, the free websites, Fidelity, RealQuest, what they're doing is they're accessing tax assessor data. The MLS is its own database. These other sources are accessing the database that is maintained by the tax assessor. Now you might say, well, why can't I just go get it myself? Because a lot of tax assessors don't report their data online, but they do report it to third parties.